Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I'm going to tell you what my July favorites are. This is going to consist of a lot of Netflix slash a lot of random movies slash I spent way too much time in front of the television. But first I am going to start off with a couple of my few random like items that are tangible and I can hold. Firstly being this candle. It is Perfect Night Scented Soy Candle. I got this from Target. What's the brand? Scent Portfolio? Is that a brand? I guess that's a brand. But this candle smells like straight vanilla with a little bit of woodsy smell, but it's mostly vanilla. And it's on the sweet side, which I normally am not like a big fan of. But what I tend to do is I burn one candle throughout the entire reading of a book or a series because I read that what helps you recall things easier is smell. So I would, you know, associate the smell then with the book and I read the Opportunist series when I burnt this and so it's like one of those like, oh, I read it and I'm going back in time and the llamas and the, I fell in love under a tree and it reminds me of the Opportunist series, which I really want to reread actually. And I don't reread things. <laughs> my next favorite is this lipstick that I'm wearing on my lips right now and it is Fairest Nude by L'Oreal. It is just, it's almost my exact lip color. It's like how beauty gurus say your lip color but better, this is it for me. Especially in the winter, I feel like. It's a little bit too light maybe for summer, but definitely this is going to be an amazing winter and fall color. And my next two favorites are these nail polishes. The first one is by Essie and it is Find Me an Oasis. It's like this white, almost blue kind of color. It's very, very white. But then there's that thing of blue, just like the white, almost blue, because I had to explain that in just more words. But I've been wearing the shit out of this because it's like the light and springy color and I'm trying, I'm trying to be summer. I just really want to paint my nails black all the time. Also to go along with the whole I'm trying to be summery kind of theme going on here, I have this OPI nail polish that is Do You Lie Lack It? Ha, huh, so funny. This stays on so well, which makes me super, super happy. Next up I have a, is it considered a body butter or like, yeah, it's considered a body butter. It is the Soap and Glory Super Rich Smoothing Body Cream. I lied, it was a body cream. Um, and it's like the typical Soap and Glory smell. And it's not even that I use this for moisturizing this because I don't really feel like it moisturizes that well. But it smells so good, oh my god. And let me just say, all animals like this smell because anytime I go to my friend Megan's house and I wear this, her dog will not stop kissing me. Like, I, she won't stop, she's like licking my legs. All dogs really do that when I wear this. So animals love this smell. If you don't enjoy puppies licking your legs, don't wear this. If you do, I would try. This next favorite is like a bath beauty type of thing. It is the Pink Frosted Animal Cracker by Philosophy. It's like a body wash and it says you can use it as shampoo. I put a little bit of it in my shampoo so that I can smell like an animal cracker because I like smelling like an animal cracker. My next favorite is a very random favorite, definitely a random favorite. Again, also Megan's fault. These next couple things are all Megan's fault, but in a very good way. She had me try her toothpaste and it's by Crest. It's Be Adventurous Mint Chocolate Toothpaste. It sounds disgusting, but really awesome at the same time. It's one of those where you're just like, I just don't know how this is gonna go, but I'm gonna try it because it could be amazing. It's amazing, try, be adventurous, try it. Tastes like an Andes in your mouth, but cleaner, less chocolate, more mint, but still chocolate. I went to Lush the other day, or a couple weeks ago actually, uh, and I got the Let the Good Times Roll, and it is a face and body cleanser. It's gently exfoliating maize and polenta cleanser with an absolutely scrumptious sweet and salty popcorn scent for soft, smooth skin. Holy shit, it smells like sweet popcorn and I love it. I will hands down use this for the smell for the rest of ever. It smells so good. Now onto the movies and the Netflix. First, I'm going to talk about Dexter. It is the last month that I will be talking about Dexter. It ended and I'm so pissed about the ending. It, mm, okay. When this goes away, that's how you know that I'm no longer spoiling it. So if you just are not interested in watching Dexter, which I would highly actually recommend you watching, but if you're not or you have seen it, go ahead and keep listening. Otherwise, wait until this goes away and then we're gold, okay? It's just be really quick. I get that it was the whole comeuppance thing, but a lumber check? Really? There, this could have been ended so many different ways. Oh, I don't want to have my son raised by a serial killer so I'm not gonna be in his life but I'm gonna leave him with another serial killer. Okay, logic. Okay. Then the Laura thing. His mother being named Laura, the hurricane being named Laura. I appreciate that symbolism. 
likes Deb. So that was that was good. That's my one positive note. I love Deb. I'm so sad. Now that that is over, I'm going to now talk about a couple more, a lot more actually, Netflix things. So I started watching Orange is the New Black. I know, all my friends that have been telling me to watch it for so long, I've started. I am really liking it actually. I, I honestly didn't think I would. And it's not like it's the best show I've ever seen. Like I've seen better shows, but this is so fun and entertaining and just, I laugh so damn much. I don't like comedies. I think that's why I was really hesitant. I just, I'm one of those people that's like laughter. <sighs> While the car alarm, oh, it stopped. Look at you. Are you guys my favorite everything? If you guys have any creative names that it's not too creative because my brother wants a very boring and normal name, but just, I don't want him to pick white socks or white paws because she has all her little toes are white. She's super soft and cuddly. Oh my God, she's the softest kitty. No, love me longer. Just love me a little bit longer. And oh yeah, that sweet noise. But we're trying to think of a name for her and I really don't want him to name her after a candy bar. Please help me think of something. I have two more and I'm gonna show you them because I started and now I can't stop. I'm not Miley Cyrus though. Hi, you're so pretty. Um, her name is Courage. She's afraid of everything. She doesn't like being held. Okay, hold on. Cuddle time. Cuddle time, please. She's super pretty and she's terrified of everything. Hence the name Courage because it's ironic. And this is Bronte. I think I'm sticking with the name Bronte. She's orange and pretty. They're all girls, by the way. She likes being held sometimes, but then she gets really restless. Here, I hold your bum and then you're good, right? Good? Nope, you're bored. Okay. Back to movies. I just before this actually, do you want to be held now? Okay. So I was watching a movie between filming videos, waiting for my camera to charge, and I started re-watching The Ledge. Uh, it has Charlie Hunnam and Liv Tyler and Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson can be a creepy motherfucker when he wants to be, let me just say that. Okay, are you bored already? Oh my god, stop being a trapeze artist, act, person, thing. <sighs> this is one of those movies that really sticks with me and it... I want to say something, but it's such a spoiler. Let me just read a summary, because I don't want to spoil it, because I could easily spoil this movie. A thriller in which a battle of philosophies between a fundamentalist Christian and an atheist escalate to a lethal battle of wills. Ultimately, as a test of his faith, or lack thereof, the believer forces the non-believer onto the ledge of a tall building. He then has one hour to make a choice between his own life and someone else's. Without faith in an afterlife, will he be capable of such a sacrifice? <gasps> right? And I have a really, really big thing about people who... Mm, I really don't want to offend people, but I just believe what you believe or don't believe what you don't believe and don't shove it down people's throats. That's just my stance on everything. And so I really enjoyed this movie because it had some amazing arguments. It really did. It, it's really well acted. I love that I've never seen anything like it. It's just, I don't know, it's one of those that I feel like in 10 years I would still remember. And now I have my random movie favorite that has nothing to do with Netflix. It just has a lot to do with all my friends saying, oh my god, you haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth? I watched it freaky as fuck not like in a scary way just in like a, a weird way it is trippy and that fawn what's his name i don't know but i'm gonna give you a summary instead of just sitting here going oh my god this is so trippy weirdness it is in spanish they talk too fast i have very minimal spanish education my brother has more than me he was watching with me didn't know <laughs> so subtitles they have them there it's awesome you get used to the subtitles, it's not that big of a deal. But it's about this young girl and her mother who uh, move in with this captain of military things? I'm totally going to get the history wrong on this. Some type of civil war going on? Oh my god, I should just look up the summary. Spain, that's where it was. Okay, fascist, fascist Spain. This young girl who's obsessed with fairy tales. And not like the regular fairy tale, like Fawn and Greek God and just any kind of fairy tale really. So her and her mother move in with this captain who is like against the revolution and everything. He's a really sadistic, cruel, he's a cruel, awful man. And this girl to escape, she finds like this fantasy world. Let's see if I can say the name. My brother taught me how, um, Guillermo del Toro? I told you my Spanish was lacking. But he's like the monster man, right? He's the one that wrote and directed it. Sick twist, this guy. I want to show you just two pictures of the monsters. See that? Look at that shit. That's freaky shit. 
freaky stuff, awesome movie. Glad everybody told me to watch it. That is all in my way of random favorites this month. Be sure to check out my poetry favorites. I always forget what that thing's called. I think I know it. That alien noise was the cat. Did you hear it? Did I finally catch it on tape? If you guys have seen Splice, the orange one sounds like Dren from Splice. That's, that's the noise she makes. This is the most scattered outro ever. I apologize. So I will see you guys later next time on Bookworm Stock. Bye.